made it back up on the creek today. It's the third week in February. We're going to go running nets. Got Chad with me today. See what we got. They've been in the water a little over a week, so maybe we'll have a mess of channel cats. Got our bait bag, put half of one of those compressed cheese blocks in it, bait it back up, and slide him back in. Apparently, it's all that dirt on it. All of them. So we got big Chad up here pulling the third net. Had a little bit. Yeah, this this is the most dangerous net for him because right over there is where he went in the water a couple weeks ago. It was cold. Today's gonna be colder if it goes in. Yeah, I'd, I'd try to stay out of the water today. It's been down in the twenties the last couple of nights. I'm pretty sure it's a little colder than it was a couple of weeks ago. Doing pretty good today. I raised two and got 70, 76 channel cat out of two nets. Raising the third one right now. These channel cat, it's uh, middle of February. They've done started running a little bit, so I think we're going to have a pretty good catch today. Who is here? Got them in that one too. Yeah. View. Get this one back in, get him fishing. Hey Chad, let it pull tight on the inside of that other one. Stretch it out on the anchor. Go in a little bit with it. Got enough fish? Oh yeah. Feed all them babies you got coming? Yeah. Some good channel cats in there.
We had a good catch of channel cats today. We got exactly what we was looking for. Got some nice ones in there. I'm gonna show you in this one how we clean our channel cats. And there's there's several different ways, whether we're filleting or staking or uh, hole fryers. I'm gonna show you all those different ways that we do our channel cats. Okay. First one we're gonna do is just a basic hole fryer. You know, these are these are the smaller ones in some people's ask about, and all we're doing on them is just skinning them. There's a little uh, bone right here. We grab that bone and break it, and that skin will come right back there like so. Grab that skin with our catfish skinners and uh, get it out of there. I always take that right there, that top fin, out with them skinners just like that. And I also grab this fin right here. You can leave it in if you want. But if you notice when I'm pulling that out, you can see those little fin bones coming right out of there like that. And we'll take a knife, start that, open his belly up, break that head off, get that out of there. And we'll reach in there with them skinners and pull all that out, just like so. Now that's that's our hole fryer, and the only other thing that we do now is we'll come in right behind the ribs, or right in here, we'll come in here and make a, a cut, and another one, and another one. And that's just for frying to help that oil get in that meat and, and cook it faster on our hole fries. That's it on that. The other way we do these uh, smaller channel cats is fillet them. Now there's a couple different ways to fillet. A lot of people would just go in here and fillet them out just like a crappie or anything else. But to me, when you do that, you get in this gut and you get gut all over your meat and everything else. So there's a couple more ways. There's a rib cage right in here. I come in here a lot of times right behind that rib cage and I'll run that point of that knife up. Just like that and I'm pulling all this meat out of here and there's no ribs in this nothing it's it's ready to, to be washed now sometimes there'll be a little skin or something on this side and you just take your skinners and pull that off but that's that's a channel cat fillet ready to ready to be cooked and eaten right there coming here on this other side same way with my knife right behind those ribs this is a Probably the easy and fastest way, if I've got a lot of fish, this is this is how I'm gonna be dressing them. And I just take that knife and flip that over there in a pile, and I'll end up with a pile of fillets over there. Now you can grill, blacken, fry, whatever you wanna do with these fish, but if we're gonna fry these fish, I come right in here beside this lateral line on the bigger ones, anything over about two pounds, and trim that lateral line out. Now look, right there, there's none of that bloodline, that, that lateral line, on either side of that fillet when I get done with it. So, there you are. This, I'm not advertising for these guys or anything, but it's just a standard electric knife from Walmart or online amazon whatever black and decker these are about 15 bucks best of my knowledge uh they're work good you don't burn them up i feel a lot of fish with them and you can take these knives when they're new and if they're cutting through the skin a lot you can take them and just literally run them across some metal a little bit to dull them up just a tad and then you can fillet your channel cats a whole lot easier now our last thing on channel cats is catfish steaks. We got a pretty big channel cat here. We're gonna skin him out. We're gonna stake him up. I'm gonna show you how I do it. But I always come right there, grab that bone, start skinning him back. All right, we got him skinned there.
I always pull these bottom fins out with my skinners, get them out of the way. Break that head off, get it out of the way. All right, I always take my nuggets off first. That's catfish nuggets. Some people don't use that. It's belly meat on channel cat. You can come in here, take a knife right in here along that. Kind of cut into that just a little bit. Along that lower fin there. Now I'm going to take my skinners. I'm going to pull it out. And you'll be able to see that smaller section of bone again. See them smaller bones coming out of there. And if you are doing this and you see one of them bones not come out, you know you missed one, go back and get it. All right, that's out of there. For our stakes, I want a tail section. And look how I'm coming in at an angle because that's how the backbone. See, we cut that at an angle with our backbone. We don't want to cut across that. So I go down, angle back. That's catfish steak. So you can see how I'm cutting it. Down at an angle. I'm going to turn my knife and go backwards at an angle. Each one of the catfish steaks, that's how it's going to look when I do it. And what that does, that keeps me from having these little bones all cut up in my meat. So when I fry that, this side will come off and that side will come off. That's how I like to do my catfish steaks, just like so. But that's my catfish steaks right there. what we normally do whenever we're frying our fish. I've got yellow cornmeal mix, self-rising. So I normally just maybe about two cups, cup and a half, depending on how much fish you have. Then we have some Tony's. I just sprinkle it on there really good. Just kind of coat the top. <clears throat> Same goes for the pepper. And then your garlic. Really, we don't measure, we just kind of go by our taste. We go by how it looks, you know, you see the pepper and the red pepper in there. So you just mix it up really good. On our fillets, we do not add mustard. That will cause the batter to get cakey and it won't be good. On our catfish steaks and our whole fryers, we add just a little bit of mustard, just enough that our cornmeal is gonna stick to our fish. We're just gonna add a little bit of mustard to this. Like I said, not very much. It's probably like the uh, half a tablespoon. And we just mix it up really good. All right, we got our Cajun batter bowl right here. And I'm going to take, I'm going to fry my whole fryers and our catfish steaks first. So I'm just going to add just a few of them in there. And the reason why I'm frying them first, because they'll take a little bit longer than my fillets will. So put them down in my cornmeal, that on top. This thing is a lifesaver, just so you know. But if you don't close it, it's a mess too. Shake it out, take your strips out for the day. Look at that, it's ready to go into grease. Got them ready, huh? Yep. Let's go See for them. See how now. the cornmeal's sticking to the fish? Because that mustard helps a lot. I say let's go put them in there. Ready to go in. Watch them scream. Yeah. About three minutes in right now. Yeah. Okay, it's five minutes in, so they're starting to float, so we're gonna go ahead and pull them out.
over 325 by 330 on our Cajun fryer there. It's going to be perfect. It's going to be perfect on these fillets. going about three to four minutes. Yeah. Five second rule. Yeah, start back in the grease and kill whatever was on it. Drop one on the ground, just throw it back <laughs> in the grease. It'll be fine. Hey, if a five second rule don't get it, the grease sure will want to grow. See that platter. Looks good. That's where it's happening at. Alright. That's some good stuff right there. God's country hunting and fishing. Keeping it real.